Hi and welcome to another quick tutorial. Um, today we're in After Effects and I know it's very popular to be using those drones to do a lot of motion tracking footage so I wanted to show you how to properly do that. So today what we're going to try to do is mimic this shot which is a view of an apartment building down um, south of Denver and in it we animate on several objects as we use live footage that's uh, motion tracking a uh, shape on top of this building here, we're going to have animated text show up as we draw a line to the headline here, and then we've got a couple logos that are all in place. And everything is, is motion tracked. Um, so this is just one thing that you can do with motion track footage. Obviously, you, if you're looking to do something um, in you know with, with movies or CGI, you can do a lot more. You could do a sky replace. You could. Um, add in three-dimensional objects from Cinema 4D, but we're just going to do that today. So first thing we're going to do is going to create a new comp. I'm just going to call this tutorial, tr tutorial track, and then we're going to bring in this motion track clip, which I already rendered out from Premiere Pro. It's not graded or anything like that. Um, and we're going to go to the end here, hit N on my keyboard, and then right-click and hit tr Trim Comp to Work Area. So now the entire length here of this comp is the entire clip. And since you notice the camera move is going left to right here, that means that objects on the horizon are going to be slowly moving, whereas objects in the foreground are moving a lot quicker. You get that parallax motion. Um, you're going to need a three-dimensional track as opposed to a two-dimensional track where you would just be panning up or down and in place, fixed motion. This is really going to have to have three-dimensional motion so we can create depth to this scene. So all we're going to do is we're going to go over here, we're going to hit, we're going to basically hit track camera. And you'll notice it's going to say initializing up here in the upper left hand corner. We've now dropped this 3D camera tracker onto the clip. And it's going to do its thing. Depending on how long of a clip, obviously the, the times can can vary widely, but this shouldn't be too long once it initializes. Um, so I'll speed this up and we'll talk in a minute. Okay, so now we're back and I have tracked this footage and um, what you're going to notice is, and it might be hard to see, but there are all these tracker, there are all these tracker points as long as I have camera tracker highlighted and when I highlight over them, they're going to give me all these different angled targets, but really what we're looking for is to mimic using the human eye how we can create a fake three-dimensional plane in here. So obviously that's the kind of shape that I'm looking for really is something that matches the ground. I'm not looking for an angle like this. That's not going to do me much good unless I'm just trying to put something on the rooftop. So um, I'm going to look for something that I like. I like that angle right there. What I'm going to create is a knoll and a camera. All right, This camera it has to be there because you're essentially taking footage that doesn't have anything other than the way that it's shot and you're adding in a camera that can now see three-dimensional objects that we're going to put in the scene and the null is going to hold all of our position data. So you'll notice here where it says 3D layer, this is already enabled. And if I hit P on my keyboard, there's all the position data of where that null exactly is in space. Z being the real key component there because that's our depth in the scene. So we don't want to mess with this at all. Um, that's going to mess up our tracks. We want to make sure that position data stays the same. We're going to use that later. All right. So now if you scrub through the scene and you have your null highlighted, uh, as I do now, I scrub through, you'll notice that that's a pretty good track, right? It's really stuck right on the edge of that parking lot. And the red arrow, if you notice, is pointed further to my right, but as I move right, it starts to angle back towards me, so I know it knows where it is in 3D space. So now what we can do is we can create uh, a new layer if we want. We can just go up here and let's, you know, let's start off by just doing some text. So let's just say tutorial track, okay? Nothing to it, and I'm going to make it three-dimensional it's not going to move anywhere. It still doesn't know where it is in three-dimensional space. So as I move, this thing is going to drift. It essentially thinks it's directly in front of my 3D camera because as I, as I hit P on my keyboard, there is no Z depth to it. 
but that's where this null comes in ha um, handy. So if I go on here, hit P under null, highlight position and hit command C to copy that data. I come over to tutorial track and I hit command V. Well, now I've put that in the same position as my um, null, but you'll notice it's disappeared. Well, that's because when you're that far away on the Z, you're gonna have to really increase the size of this. Um, and you wanna be sure that scale may not be the best way to do that. The best way to do that might actually be to go in here and change the font size, um, because sometimes you'll notice that if you have an object and you scale it up, it might actually lose resolution. Um, anyway, so now I've got tutorial track in there, and how easy was that? It's already tracked in my footage, it's already sitting there, but it doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm going to look at the angle of the shadows I see here. What I notice is the, sh the light is kind of going this way. So the sun's kind of where my mouse is right here, and the light is broadcasting that way, a shadow sort of to the, um, this would be to the north, if you're familiar with Denver. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create just kind of a quick shadow. So all I'm going to do is a Command D on my keyboard to duplicate that. And then in the rotation field, uh, on the X, I'm going to fold this thing down. And then on the Z, I'm going to do a slight rotation. And I'm actually going to move it just a little bit beyond. Okay, So we've got a shadow there, but it's obviously not doing anything good. So up here, under uh, effects and presets, I'm going to hit tint and drop that on my new layer and I'm going to make sure I'm mapping white to like a kind of a dark gray. All right. Well now it does have a little depth to it. You'll notice it actually looks pretty cool just doing that. But obviously we know unless there's a solar eclipse going on that the light from the sun is going to make more of a, a blurred shadow. So what I've done is then I've just added a Gaussian blur for my effects and presets and voila, I now have a nice shadow in the background. The last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to scale it up just a little bit, but I might scale, turn off uniform and just scale it in the Y direction. All right, so now my shadow has grown and just like that, I've got a pretty realistic looking shadow going on that is just laying out on the parking lot and it gives the feeling like that text is sitting there, okay? Um, so that's just a really basic overview of how to do it. Obviously, you can go much further with this. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.